Hi everyone. How are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Like always, today I'm going to discuss some topic that will make you wonder about the advanced technology of the past, and more. I found this on a book by Xavier Hayes, called, Ancient Giants, History Myth and Scientific Evidence from Around the World. Please check the description to know more, there are many interesting topics there, and not all of them can be covered here. I know that my video quality is far from good, but I hope the content is understandable. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by discussing this. But that's the whole point. This is proof that a small occult elite of the history to fit their narrative. Anyway, I also have a telegram channel. There, I will share various information that I cannot share here. Don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel, the link is also in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. The longest ancient Japanese sword ever unearthed has been rescued from a 6th century underground tomb on Japan's southernmost island of Kyushu in the Miyazaki Prefecture. The sword in its remaining state is approximately 142 centimeters, but according to researchers, once it is fully restored, its estimated length would reach well over 150 centimeters, or 5 feet long. It matches other Japanese giant artifacts, which used to be displayed at the Tokyo National Museum, before being buried deep somewhere in the museum's basement. Artist and Japanese historian, Brian Snoddy, writes about these giant artifacts after seeing them for the first time in 2002. Although I had visited before, I was now shocked at what I saw, and was dumbfounded that I had not noticed these things before. I saw several objects that were so large in proportion to Japanese people at that time, they can only be described as giant artifacts. The first objects to receive my attention were some spear points. They were included in a display of 12 objects altogether. Four of the objects were KA blades. A KA is a type of pole axe, where the spear-like blade was attached to the side of a shaft and used in a chopping and hooking fashion. There were two spear points so large that it made me do a double take. They were both double the size of the next largest object in the display and measured about three feet in length. All of these objects are about three times the size of regular sword fittings. Most swords of this time were single-edged straight swords that carried a cutting blade length of two to three feet. However, these giant sword parts could have easily supported a cutting blade length of six to eight feet. Figure number five of the illustration, in my opinion, shows one of the most impressive pieces of the giant artifacts in the museum. It is an iron shield about five feet tall. Made of several riveted iron plates, it is a magnificent piece of craftsmanship. In the display, this shield is seated between two suits of armor. The armors are so small in comparison, the shield looks like a large door. The weight would be anyone's guess, but I suspect at least 30 pounds. How a five-foot person could carry this thing around during hand-to-hand -hand combat is beyond me. I also could not imagine anyone under eight feet high wearing these things either. As of 2009, my last visit to Japan, all the remaining objects were still there. However, I have not heard nor read anything from any museum worker or any Japanese historian who can or has explained the giant nature of these artifacts. They are simply ignored. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. On a misty full morning in the Chinese village of Pinjian, a group of travelers came across a giant footprint measuring 57 centimeters, or almost 2 feet long, 20 centimeters wide, and 3 centimeters deep. More of these giant footprints can be found thousands of miles away in the ancient lands of mystical India, a country with an astonishing history and fabulous tales of ancient giants. 
The monumental stoneworks of the ancient world bear mute witness to the giants who quarried, transported, and placed the megaliths to construct awe-inspiring temples, fortresses, astronomical sites, sculptures, graves, and monuments to the dead. But all the evidence of the giants is not mute. From the Bible's specific listing of 36 tribes and 22 individual giants in the ancient Holy Land, to dramatic Greek legends, to the folklore of the Solomon Islands, the stories told by peoples around the world attest to the presence of giants living, building, fighting, and ruling throughout the ancient world. Despite the vast differences in cultures in places as disparate as Russia and Africa, the British Isles and the Hawaiian Islands, Spain and New Zealand, France and India, and beyond, they have all preserved memories of ancient giants. In addition, around the world, the impressive remains of giants have been found preserved under stone and earth, sometimes accompanied by giant-sized weapons. Despite the all-too-common habit of academia to lose or rebury those remains in museum catacombs, the documentation of their discoveries in the popular press is widespread. One wonders at the academic resistance to acknowledging the existence of our larger forebears. Is it because modern egos recoil from the idea that anything bigger or better could have come before? Is this a form of species arrogance? not allowing any disturbance to the storyline that current humans are the victorious culmination of survival of the fittest? Or is it due to a fundamental disease with visions of humanity too unlike what we know? Whatever the reason, for all the traces of ancient giants preserved in the human psyche and in the earth, there are almost as many instances of cover-ups and dismissals. But, as you have seen, when the records that have not been erased are gathered together, as they are here, they constitute evidence that is not easily dismissed, especially when they are paired with the abundant and pervasive oral history of giants, and their still visible monumental creations. If you haven't already, I encourage you to use this channel to guide your explorations of the rich treasure trove of legends and folklore of giants from around the world, further research the remains of giants, or visit the inspiring and wonder-inducing megalithic sites. It is sure to be a gigantic adventure. What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.